guess where I am? I am in Osaka, Japan for the first time ever. Of course, with none other than Hana from One World Kitchen. Welcome to Osaka, everyone. We are, tell us about where we are. Okay, so we are at the intersection of Shinsai Bashi Suji, which is a really famous shopping arcade, and Dotonbori, which is a really famous eating street. So what I love about Osaka is it's called the food city and there is a phrase here that's called kui daore which means literally to fall over from eating because Osakans just love to eat and so do we and so <laughs> that's why we are here so Hannah is gonna take us all over the city and try the best food hopefully I've ever had in my life so let's go check it out Shinsaibashi is a bustling shopping arcade where you can get all sorts of cute kawaii souvenirs like a tail wagging cat or these butt warming undies. We also unexpectedly caught this neat parade, although we're not exactly sure what it was all about. <laughs> And as we approached Dotonbori, or the eating street, right away we were attracted by the sound. So our first eating stop on Dotonbori is takoyaki, which is I guess I'm gonna call it spherical octopus pancake, right? It's soft on the inside with a crust on the outside and it's super cool how they make it. It's piping hot. This one, Hannah said, is particularly soft. Oh my god. And uh, in order to not burn your mouth, bite it open a little bit and then let it cool off. Don't stick the whole thing in your mouth. It's super like soft and molten on the inside. Mmm! <laughs> Just the right amount of sweet and umami and creaminess and chewy octopus. Takoyaki is all about the full experience from watching it being made to actually getting to eat it. So that's what I think is the best part of our takoyaki to get all the flavors of the dashi and the, and the egg and the octopus and the sauces and the seaweed and the katsuobushi on top. But the best part about takoyaki is that you get to watch it being made as well. Yeah. And in case you ever wonder where this place is, just look for the giant octopus on the wall. That's where this place is. Right behind us is the mascot of Osaka. So what's his name? His name is Kui Daore-kun. So Kui Daore means to fall over from eating or to go broke from eating. And that's what Osakans love to do. And they also love to pose in front of Kui Daore-kun, get some pictures and then buy all the associated merch with Kui Daore-kun. <laughs> All right, so we stopped to come in for some yakisoba. So yakisoba for me is actually one of the very first Japanese food I had ever in Thailand. Yeah, so it's like a little nostalgic and it comes with tons of katsuobushi on top which dances like they're alive. So on the side as well is bini shoga. So that's this really, really bright pink pickled ginger. So we may usually mix it in and it adds like a bright tangy kick. Here, I'm so gonna put mine back <laughs> so it can get tossed. And when you're in Japan, you actually should serve other people before you serve yourself. Good to know. <laughs> so while Hannah is polite and serving other people, I'm gonna eat. <laughs> That tastes nothing like the yakisoba I grew up eating in Thailand. <laughs> the texture of the noodles is nice and chewy. The perfect salty sweet combination. Mm. Ooh, oh my god, a piece of pork belly. Mm. 
And of course, we gotta have sushi when in Japan. We went into this place and sat right at the bar so we can watch our sushi being made. This right here is my brother's plate. I'll let him tell you a little more about it. Just four pieces of sushi today. Yes. But some very, very special sushi. We have raw tiger prawn. But by raw, you mean like... They just, they, like mine just left <laughs> that cabinet. And it is now here. And its head is now here, fried. <laughs> mm. I'm very surprised by how sweet it was. Genuinely, it had it has a sweetness to it, and it doesn't taste raw. It's very mild, very pleasant, with a bouncy kind of a chewy texture that kind of plays with you as you eat. Oh, sounds cool. How much was that piece? Ten and a half dollars. Oh my <laughs> so as for me, I had salmon, ikura, and yellowtail. I just had the piece of salmon and it was the freshest, the textures unlike anything I've ever had. And I'm looking forward to really trying these. Oh, they're like little jewels, jewels of the sea. I like the cucumber too. That was the single best piece of ikura sushi I've ever had. The texture just like bum, 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 in your mouth and it's fresh, salty, briny ocean flavor coming out. That seaweed it has more flavor than seaweed that I've had in Canada. I mean, just, and there's a little touch of wasabi in there they've already put in, just the right amount to balance everything. That was like puzzling. That was, that was so good, it kind of like boggles my mind. It really was. As we walked around to make room for even more food, we saw some pretty cool stuff, like this insanely cute puppy, this terrifying fish, and this full-body version of Dance Dance Revolution. Yeah, she's very good at that. And it's time for dessert! So this is Thai Yaki. Thai is sea bream or like snapper. Mm -hmm. And obviously this isn't fish. This is <laughs> a delicious sweet batter, but inside is azuki beans. So they are sweet red beans. So this is one of the most staple of the traditional Japanese desserts is red sweet beans. Oh. In Japan, we call natsukashi, which is nostalgic because it's a very traditional, old-fashioned dessert. So this is something that my grandmother would have had. Oh. And it's something that I've grown up having, especially at summer festivals. So when the guy handed this to us, he said, careful, it's hot. And sure enough, you bite the first one open and it's like, a volcano of steam running out. So you kind of got to like have a little patience. And when I eat it, I want to make sure I take a little bit of the doughy part and the red bean part. Mm. It's such comforting dessert. Mm. None of the sweets that I've had in Japan so far is overly sweet, which is surprising and good at the same time. Okay, so we just got white strawberries and they're incredibly expensive. So this whole thing is a thousand yen or ten US dollars. And and because they're small, I think this is like the cheaper of the of the options, yes. right? Hannah has okay. never tried one. I've never tried one. But they're grown in Nara where which is oh. where I used to live, so I'm very excited. Oh they smell so good. They smell they like... They smell like strawberry candy! Yeah, they smell like there's been artificial strawberry flavoring injected into them. And it's like reversed. The seeds and it's reversed. Red. Yeah, the seeds are white. The red. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know how to describe this. Oh, wow. Like, the texture is different too. It's really soft. Really soft. <laughs> and it's, it's mild, the sweetness is not that strong, but it's also not sour. Like at I find all. in Canada, huh? At all. Like at all, it's sour. not sour at all. Like in Canada, if you have a strawberry, if it's not sweet, it's sour. I think with this though, it's all about the 
smell. Yes, it's it, but like it smells the way and that it smells. Absolutely. It smells incredibly sweet. And nope, we are not done eating. I've been really looking forward to this one, okonomiyaki. This is one of Osaka's most famous food, right? Yes. Okonomiyaki, or Japanese pizza as we call it. And here we are. <laughs> it is huge and it comes with this little pizza cutter that you can then get make slices. Oh, there's like a big piece of something there. Oh, shrimp. Oh, is that the shrimp one? Yeah, this is the shrimp one. Oh. Really soft and tender, and almost custardy on the inside. A little crunchy from the cabbage. There's tons of cabbage in here. Sweet, savory, creamy from the Japanese mayo. Mm. Delicious. Hannah left us for the day, but we met up with another local friend, Shun, who took us to this cutest little restaurant that felt like somebody's house, and we sat right up there. And we came here because I had a special request. So, one of the things I really, really, really wanted to try when in Japan is omurice, which is this omelet. Uh, so, soft cooked omelet over fried rice with a sauce on it. And our good friend has delivered my request. So, here it is right here this omelet that's like super soft on the inside. And if you see how they make it, it actually gets cut open and then it splits open. To cover this fried rice at the bottom. Mmm. And this restaurant, by the way, has been around since 1952. So I'm super excited about that. Oh, it's perfectly, perfectly soft. I smell ketchup. Looks like the rice was fried with ketchup. Mmm. That is so delicious. It reminds me remotely of Thai food because we like to put ketchup on our, on a Thai, well, I like to put ketchup on my Thai omelet, but it also has that beefiness because that sauce is like a demi glass. That is so good. I'm so excited. My dream is coming true. And that is all for this episode. If you want to see more of my food travel videos, check out the links in the description box below. And don't forget to subscribe to never miss an episode. A special thanks to Hana for being our food guide this trip. And I will see you next time. Bye!